shown there no dignity claimed for one who deserves to be crowned and enthroned on our praise and what kind of king is so modestly born when glory unmeasured is humble and small well, this is
Merry Christmas. Thank you so much for joining me on this Christmas Day afternoon. My name is Sharon and I am one of the leaders here at New Life Church. Now, I don't know about you, but in my house, this is the point of the day at which we have opened all our prezzies, we have eaten the Christmas lunch, and we've watched the Queen's speech. And our minds are now turning to a moment of peace and quiet before the evening entertainment begins. And so I want to invite you on this Christmas afternoon to come with me on a few moments of rest, relaxation and reflection. So I have a question for you. Have you ever heard of Huga? Four years ago, the Collins English Dictionary named it as the runner up for the word of the year. Now, can you guess what the actual word of the year was? It was Brexit. Now, despite that recognition, it's quite a tricky word, especially if, like me, you're an English person who has very little knowledge or understanding of the Scandinavian languages. In fact, it is spelt H-Y-G-G-E, and for a long time I was pronouncing it as Higgy. And having discovered how it's really pronounced, I'm now really hoping that Higgy is not a very rude word in Danish, Perhaps you can reassure me in the comments right now that that's not the case. Now, a good friend introduced me to Huga, and the word refers to, in Danish, courage, comfort, and joy. It's all about coziness and being comfortable. It's about a feeling of wellness. It's about contentment. It's also linked to the Norse word, the ancient Norse word, which stands for to think. So it's a really great concept. As a practice, it's all about wearing cosy jumpers and warm woolly socks on a cold day. It's about candles and mince pies. It's about watching your favorite movie, the one that makes you feel really good and you just love to watch it over and over. It's about curling up with a good book. It's about cooking your favorite comfort food and enjoying it with your friends. It's about taking time out of our busy, busy lives and just resting, relaxing and reflecting. I am so glad that my friend introduced me to this concept. And she is such a big fan. She sold it to me so well. And if you've never tried it before, I would really encourage you to have a go. You will love it. So as we move into this time of reflection, I want us to begin with thanksgiving. You know, in the early days of the church, Paul wrote many, many letters to all sorts of different churches. And in one particular one, which he sent to the church in Thessalonica, he said to them, in all circumstances, give thanks. You can find that in the New Testament, in the, in the Bible. It's 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. Now, I think Paul was on to something that modern day psychologists have proven to be absolutely true. And it's this. The human brain actually has a natural tendency to remember the negative things that happen to us and to keep focusing on the negative stuff in our lives. And so if we want to counteract that, we have to very positively and intentionally think about the good things. And one way of doing that is to think about the things that we are grateful for. And so as we do that, I just want to encourage you to be looking back what happened to you over the past 12 months that you're grateful for. I have to confess, when we went into the second lockdown in November, I was really quite depressed about the whole idea of doing that again. But I also felt prompted to use my Facebook page to every single day post up something that I was grateful for. And so I did that. And I found it so helpful. It lifted my mood uh, each and every day as I just sat there and thought, what can I put on Facebook that today I am grateful for? And what I was really chuffed about was that some of my friends began to get in touch and going, telling me that actually that was so helpful for them as well. And so today, let's just spend a few seconds, a little bit of time, just focusing on what we are grateful for as we look back over those 12 months. Because yes, it was hard, but there was also stuff in there that was good. Let me pray before we do this. Holy Spirit, will you just come now to each and every one of us 
a remind us of those moments through this past 12 months where there has been joy, where we have smiled, where we have been grateful for things, perhaps grateful for the friend who called us up with a, an encouraging word, grateful for the beauty of nature all around us, grateful for your presence. Remind us now of those things as we come into this time in an attitude of gratitude. the past 12 months have been far from easy with all the different lockdown restrictions that we have faced and also with the economic issues that have come into our economy because of the pandemic. But you know what? The Bible does not shy away from being authentic about the pain and the hurt of difficult times. We are not called to wear a mask over our pain. We are not called to pretend that everything is just fine when actually it isn't. It's okay to not be okay. If you read the book of Lamentations in the Old Testament and many of the Psalms, you will find that they were written by people who were going through really difficult times and who were being totally honest and open about how they felt about this. They were crying out to God, telling him of their pain and their hurt. Lamentations in particular is an expression of pain and grief on behalf of an entire nation that was going through one of its most difficult times in history. Jesus himself lamented. Luke 19 verse 14 tells us of his heartbreak over the city of Jerusalem. It says this, And when he drew near and he saw the city, he wept over it. So let's take some time now to reflect on the things that have caused us hurt and pain over these past 12 months. It might be the loss of freedom that we have all experienced. Maybe you have lost a loved one. Perhaps you have become unwell or you have been dealing with an ongoing illness throughout the pandemic, which has made it twice as difficult. But as you do, I would encourage you to be completely honest with God about those things, but to also bring them to him with an expectation that as you talk to him, you will receive his comfort. 2 Corinthians 1 verses 3 to 4 remind us that God is there with us in the midst of our troubles. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in our times of troubles, so that we can comfort those who are in trouble, just as we receive that comfort ourselves from him. And also Romans 12 verse 15 says this, Rejoice with those who rejoice, but mourn with those who mourn. Let me pray again before we do this reflection. Holy Spirit, come and be with us now as we come to you in complete honesty and authenticity, reflecting on the past few months and the things that have not been easy, the things that have disappointed us, the things that have caused our hearts to break. We bring them to you now. We look at them with honesty. We speak them out and name them. But we do so knowing that Father God is the God of comfort, 
that you, Holy Spirit, are the comforter. And so we look for that supernatural exchange of our hurt for your comfort. In the name of Jesus, amen. As this time of reflection comes to a close, I want us now to look to the future. At the beginning of December, the news was full of stories of vaccines being produced. And I think now would be a really good time to just pray into that. They are offering us the hope of a COVID-free future. And don't we all want and long for that? So let's just take a moment to pray. Father God, we thank you for the skill, the intelligence, and the expertise, the training that has gone into producing the vaccines for every medical researcher and who has put in so much effort into that. And we just pray for them now. We ask for your favor and blessing upon each and every one of them. We ask for your favor and your blessing upon the NHS as they are looking at ways to roll out approved vaccines as fast as possible. And we pray too for your favour and blessing on our governments around the world as they are looking to um, facilitate that. We all stand before you, Father God, asking for these vaccines to work, asking for COVID-19 to be eradicated from our world and just thanking you that you were, were and are with us in this situation. Amen. But you know, wonderful as that is, and a great hope that that is for the coming year, as Christians, as followers of Jesus, we have an even greater hope, a hope that is completely and utterly assured. Isaiah, who is an Old Testament prophet, wrote this. You'll find these words in chapter 19 of the book that is named after him. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice. From that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. The core of the Christmas celebration is about the birth of Jesus. And in him, we find a hope that lifts our eyes from the troubles and the problems of today, of next week, of next year, lifting our eyes to an eternity with him. I have two pieces of scripture that I want to leave with you. And I would encourage you to um, reflect on these at your leisure, but also to really hold on to them when you are facing times of trouble, when you find yourself in a really difficult day. To not just have them as head knowledge, but to write them in your heart. The first one is 1 Peter, chapter 1, verses 3 to 6. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And he has given us an inheritance that will never perish nor spoil, 
nor fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all of this, you greatly rejoice. Although now, for a little while, you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trouble. And to close, I'd like to read to you Revelation 21, which begins with these words. This is one of my favorite passages of the Bible. It's just filled with such a wonderful vision of the future to come. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from heaven, from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God's dwelling place is now amongst the people and he will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their faces and there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. So as we close, may these scriptures bring you comfort and joy in the coming days. We have the promise of an eternity with God in a place without mourning, without pain. But until that time, may you know the comfort and the love of the Father in every single day. May you know his presence. May you know that he is with you. And remember those words from Romans that says, may we rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. I declare comfort and joy over you at the end of this year and into 2021. Thank you so much for joining with me and be blessed as you go. And I will see you in the new year. Bye.
Thank you.